Stephen T. Siegel, Chuck Brown, Dan Pantian, Stephanie Phillips, and Jason Howard come together to tell another series of Superman stories, this time all with a different iteration of Superman, from the 90s mullet rocking Superman to the Earth 2 Superman Val Zod, all endeavouring to showcase what being a hero means to the Men of Steel and the people around him. Through the combined talents of five amazing writers, Red and Blue Issue 2 excels at showcasing Superman's constant drive for peace and hope, and how he's more than just a guy who can lift moons and punch through steel with his bare hands. And more often than not, his strongest power is his willingness to talk and just be a good man. I like that the characteristic is evident in all of the Supermen of the book, and how each of them also focuses on a certain aspect of the hero, like how Valzod stands up for people despite himself getting hurt in the process or how no matter what kind of plan and patience Lex Luthor has, Superman's drive to overcome insurmountable odds and his experience will always win the day. Again like the first issue it's great we can explore all these different aspects of Superman's character and also have some good old beat em up action sprinkled in throughout it, striking up the perfect balance. On the artwork side of things, the book is supported by the likes of Duncan Rolu, Denis Cowan, Marley Zarkon, Dan Panosian, and Jason Howard, all who adhere really well with the red and blue colour aesthetic of the title, like how Dan Pessoian's story utilised the red the most, thanks to the presence of red kryptonite, having a focus on that colour more than the blue, or Marley Zarkon's lovely and light, rather cartoony work about a child who is friends with Superman. All of the art fit their respective stories so damn well and it was really fun to see how the artists would utilize the red and blue in their stories and not just paint everything as red and blue, there was a specific reason for why things were the colors they were. Superman Red and Blue Issue 2 was another extremely exciting and fun look at the different aspects that make up Superman as a character, this time spreading the love around to alternate versions of the character like the Earth 2 Superman or the Cyborg Superman, delivering the perfect balance of action and heart to create a great set of Superman stories. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Superman Red and Blue Issue 2 heads to Smallville, where Martha Kent has coffee with two rather rude women, who think that it's a miracle she had a child despite Martha not being able to bear any of her own. Martha says that if having one of her own means worrying about your boy isn't getting enough sleep at night since he works himself to the bone, or wondering if he stopped in the middle of his busy day to give himself a good meal, like the ones that she would make him so he has the strength and energy to face what the day has thrown at him. She knows the women know damn well that any day can bring a challenge completely unlike what one imagines when they woke up that morning. The women quickly agree with Martha as she says that if having your own child means giving them advice that they know they won't heed, or if it's staying up late to hear the door latch catch so you can catch a sneak peek at your child, birth or not is okay. Before Martha can tell the judgmental women where to stick their blessings, Clark arrives with the women asking how he ever got so handsome. Clark says he takes after his father, whom Martha tells the woman goes by Jonathan, not Johnny like they've been calling him. Clark apologizes for being late, but Martha knows he would have had a good reason, leaving with her boy but not before she tells Nora and Trudy that Clark is her own son. Across the stars and the multiverse, Val Zod, the Superman of Earth 2, pilots a spacecraft with his partner Crypto, telling the loyal dog that they aren't going home yet since there is something out there kidnapping people. Soon their ship is grabbed by the much larger ship and Crypto knows it's the kidnappers. The ship is boarded by Prometheus, who tells them to submit and die since their genetic material now belongs to him. Val and Crypto fight the villain and his monstrous thugs, telling him that there is nowhere he can run and hide. Prometheus strikes them with lightning, but all Val does is reveal himself to be Superman, and the villain realizes it doesn't hurt him. He tells Crypto the Cyberdog to free the prisoners while he deals with Prometheus, who begins to self-destruct the ship, saying Superman can have it since he's got fleets of them. Prometheus bids the hero farewell, since he's going to some place no man, super or not, can follow. Superman tries to stop him as he flees to another dimension, trying to stop the fires on the ship as Crypto says that the spacecraft is crashing into orbit of a nearby planet, wondering if the prisoners should start praying now. Val says that won't be necessary, wanting him to keep them safe and to brace for impact. Leaving the ship, he tries to see where he could land the ship on the planet as Prometheus's ship returns, firing on the hero. The 
The drones manage to actually hurt Val, who learns from the villain that they are enchanted with some type of magic, and while the lasers won't actually kill him, maybe the guilt of watching all of the people die will. Superman refuses to let the people die, racing towards the ship and grabbing it. Prometheus says that the man thinks he can just strap an S to his chest and call himself Superman, but he's weak to ever cry out for the people. Superman grabs the ship, refusing to let go of it as Crypto arrives, having taken control of another drone to help his friend and destroy the drone's attacking him. In the ghost zone, Prometheus' hideout is rocked by the arrival of Superman, outraging the villain, seeing as the villain was the only one with the keys to that reality. Superman said the villain said it himself, and he's got an S on his chest, and it's the only key he ever needs. In Metropolis, Lex Luthor is delivered a red package, pleased it's finally there as he tells Miss Garnet to hold all his calls. Lex takes the red kryptonite from the package, knowing people say patience is a virtue, but patience feels too close to passivity and there is something he's missing from it. He knows he must anticipate Superman's ability to overcome insurmountable odds. Lex's scientist finds the kryptonite interesting and in perfect condition, as Lex asks if he's sure that they can now govern how red kryptonite affects Superman. Man. But the scientist says he's not able to determine how Kryptonians will react to the red kryptonite, but that changed when he made the tech that can rearrange the elements in it and select how the kryptonite will change a Kryptonian's physiology, meaning they can now remove the super from Superman. Lex uses the kryptonite to power a robot, attacking Superman with it and smashing the hero away, proclaiming that it's obvious that he can't handle the red kryptonite's power. Superman knows he can't, but says at this far away range, he he can handle things just fine, blasting the robot with his heat vision and destroying it. Lex goes back to the drawing board, thinking of simplifying things, so he confronts Superman in his war suit with a red kryptonite laser pistol, saying now the further Superman gets away, the more powerful the vibrations from it become. Superman circumvents this easily by speeding towards the villain, plugging the end of the gun with his finger and destroying it from an overload. Lex thinks that maybe making things more personal is a good idea here so he ends up boxing with Superman in a huge ring, using red kryptonite boxing gloves to beat the villain down, noting how he's not so tough without his powers. Superman knows the powers don't make one tough as Lex attacks, but Superman blocks and dodges the blows, saying experience makes one tough as Lex is knocked down for the count by Superman. Superman tells Lex that he's fought many battles and learned to be tough the hard way, wondering if Lex has done that as well. Sick of being beaten, Lex contacts Miss Garnet to tell her to collect the red container and return it to the vault. The woman does so, returning Lex's plan back to the huge warehouse where he stores all his items to terrorize Superman with. Elsewhere, a little girl does a show and tell presentation on a piece of metal from a robot from outer space that Superman gave her when she helped him stop a robot invasion. She says that she brought it since Superman says that it's like a trophy and a reminder that she did something good and brave just like him. The other children in the class don't believe her, calling Ava a liar. The kids all laugh as Tyler says that if they can just make things up now, he's got a pet unicorn. The teacher tries to calm the kids, but they continue to call Ava a liar, with the girl defending herself, saying that she met Superman and they fought an alien robot. The teacher tells her to stop with this, but the girl refuses, telling them that she was in the library downtown when there was a loud noise. Going outside the library, she saw Superman battling the alien robot in the sky above them, when it blasted the hero into the ground. Ava rushes to see if the hero is okay, looking for him in the rubble. Superman soon gets up out of the rubble, asking if the girl is okay, and upon learning that she came to look for him, he tells her that that was incredibly brave, but this is a very dangerous situation and he wants to make sure that she is safe. Ava says that she just wants to help too and can despite not being a hero or having powers. Superman says that there are many different kinds of heroes, and not all of them have superpowers. The hero takes off into the sky to battle the robot again, but later returns to give Ava a piece of the robot as a memento. The kids still make fun of her, so the teacher warns Tyler he will sit out recess if he continues. Ava takes her seat as the teacher tells them it's time to head into the playground. Later outside, Tyler and the others come to pick on Ava, making fun of her liking Superman, taking the girl's homemade cape and drawing book, calling her a nerd. Third. Donning the cape, Tyler says that he's Superman as the real Superman arrives, saying it's good to see Ava again, wanting to thank her for her help, since if she didn't volunteer to help, lots of people would have been hurt. And that's what a hero is, someone who is seeing something wrong and steps in to help, and her actions make her a hero. He gives the girl his own cape, making Tyler apologize. 
Another one of the boys apologizes for taking her drawing book as Superman says that anyone can be a hero by helping those in need and right now he needs them to help organize a game of hoops. The kids cheer wanting all to be on Superman's team but Tyler says that they'll pick the teams like they always do. In Mysterious Cybase 7, the base's janitor outruns a giant robot dog creature which explodes out of the building. The man tries to attack it with his mop, but it easily bites through the tool like it's nothing. Luckily, the cyborg Superman is there to help, coming to the man's aid, saying that he is the most worthy to bear the S symbol. The janitor says that while cyborg Superman is great and all, his base is on fire and exploding, and the dog ate Dr. Hart and her whole staff. Cyborg Superman knows all of this since he's the one who shut down the beast's containment, knowing that they must test their creations. The janitor is enraged that Cyborg Superman killed them all just for an experiment, but Henshaw says that any science is experimentation, like how the dog is a fragment of techno energy mixed with some of his Kryptonian cells and hyper evolved into a dog of death, and the man's death will contribute to its journey to full power. Suddenly Superman arrives, smashing Henshaw in the face and freeing the man, grabbing him and escaping into the air. Cyborg Superman wants Superman to to accept him since he was reborn in his very matrix and they both wear the symbol of power. Superman asks the janitor if there is any safe way for him to escape, told of a boat the man can use to escape but the cyborg Superman will come for him. Superman says that he'll take care of Henshaw as the cyborg Superman rushes him, calling them both the same. Clark says that they are nothing alike, but Henshaw says he's more since he's taken away the weak human parts and become something else. He wraps Superman up in his techno tentacles as Superman is impressed Henshaw built the secret base over a active lava flow seeing as the heat hit its location from Superman, but there is a downside. Superman blasts the ground, erupting the superheated magma onto Cyborg Superman, who soon regains composure long enough to make a weapon from his hand, saying that he embodies power and Superman never should have returned from the dead. The janitor calls for Superman's help as the Cyborg dog has come for him, but Superman is dragged into the lava by Henshaw, who says that the S symbol will now only mean Cyborg. Cyborg Superman is smashed clear of the lava pit, allowing Superman to confront the dog, but Henshaw tells him to wait, since with the push of the button on the console he's next to, he will feed all of the mountain's power into the dog, and it will become more powerful than Superman, enough to kill him. So either Superman stops him from pressing the button, or he saves the man. Henshaw knows that this is the impossible choice that Superman has, but Superman knows that there is no choice, quickly saving the man while saying the symbol that they share means nothing on its own, since Cyborg Superman fights for himself and everything he does is for himself, and it's why he will never live up to the symbol. Cyborg Superman unleashes the power onto the beast, transforming his creature into a killing machine, but Superman and the janitor leave. The man says that Cyborg Superman's dog will tear him apart, but Superman says that without humanity to govern its use, power only destroys. Cyborg Superman is forced to battle his own creation as Superman says that he wonders what the dog will do when there is no enemy left to consume. Enemy left